like I'm always sad. Well, no, I was always kind of sad that Itachi did lose his counter super because it was like one of his best traits. But yeah, not his best, but like it was one of his better ones. Like just something to like if you see someone like doing a jump a at you, you can just do it. It'll activate in time. You can fuck him up that way. Um, yeah, I feel like it's always a good way of just like just making sure the opponents like wary of what the hell they do. Oh, so it's like giant black spots on Kisame's head there. That's kind of weird. Actually, that uh, uh, yeah, the headband's doing some weird shit in general. Like, if you consider how it usually looks. That is very odd, but alright. So I guess both Jiraiya and Iroka got their asses kicked by these two. And to be totally honest, it's amazing Itachi still has the juice, the uh, chakra reserves that keep going in one day because, well... <laughs> It's incredible knowing that um, Itachi doing Tsukuyomi twice in one day and Alterasu once will completely de deplete his chakra reserves because, you know, being sick as fuck and everything. But, like, even being able to keep doing uh, consecutive shit like this, he'd have to run out eventually. Because Itachi is not immortal, not yet. Um, also, you wouldn't believe it, but Jiraiya is in this shot right now. It's that weird white star on the bottom of the screen, which A, is way too, too small to be his head, B, there's no ponytail, C, he's like two feet tall compared to these guys right now. Also, I love the actual look of concern on Kakashi's face. It's kind of hilarious, actually. The perspective is also weird in their heads, I don't know. Maybe I'm imagining that. It looks like they're more facing like each other than they are towards the two men that coats in front of them. Maybe I'm imagining that, I don't know. So yeah, it's weird. Jiraiya came to fight them, and now Kakashi and Guy are stepping in, as opposed to vice versa. Because, well, we already know Kakashi and Guy don't really do too much against these guys. Alright. Also, surprise twist, you can do two on, or uh, two on two fights. I have no idea how this is accomplished, but apparently is it a thing that can be done. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, doing combos with Itachi is never hard. Like, here's a really easy high damage combo you can do with them. By the way, um, they can't tech roll after the, the uh, that kunai stab there. So, like, if they end up getting hit, you can get down before free. So, that's really cool. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Also, at this point in time, uh, this is still when Itachi is really busted. Down B. Um, so, like, a lot of his moves have really high fucking priority, like you've seen. Yeah, again, like, anytime you jump, if the opponent jumps or does an attack like that, uh, a jumping uh, clone can probably fuck him up. Also, I am losing a lot of health with Itachi, though. That's a problem. Okay. Oh, oh, before I conclude this, though, I must show Itachi's Genjutsu. So, you guys aren't imagining that. For some reason, this is JPEG as fuck. I don't know what's... Again, I'm running this game through a fucking disc. And it's running on a Wii. And... Excuse me. <coughs> For some reason... The, the game is still fucking up like that. I don't know what's causing that. I know for a fact it's not Nintendo, it's because, like, I've run three other Japanese supports games and they run fine, so I don't know. It's really weird. Oh, okay, Dry is still here, okay. <laughs> He's not a little Sonic Hedgehog anymore. Okay. Yeah, I kind of messed that one up. So it is good to know that all three of them did re actually repel them, but, like... I don't know, if Kisame were to fight them seriously, everyone here would probably be dead. Like, I, I know that Guy could... Pr Actually, this is a thought I had the other day. How strong is Guy at this point in the show compared to Jake Putin? Because, like, feasibly he wouldn't have trained at all. Because he wouldn't have had a, a real reason to. Or, like, I don't know if Guy was able to open all eight inner gates at this point in the show compared to Jake Putin. When he does open all eight inner gates, or if he's able to do, um, uh, Hiru something. 
Fuck that that tiger move he has. It's it's disappointing me. I don't remember the name of it offhand. Also, God, God, your art is atrocious. Okay. It's wrong to say. I almost I almost said Hero Dagarn, but I know that's not it because that that's not an attack move. That's an enemy from Dragon Ball Z. Unless it would be funny though if. Uh, Guy did put his fists together and extended them, and Hirudagarn did pop out of his hands. That that would be kind of funny. Terrifying, but kind of funny in its own way. So, they actually got the head... They got Kisame's headband right for the first time in this game. Or, not in the, in the game, but like, in his art. Not here, like, actual artwork. That's amazing. So, yeah. This fight would feasibly be a lot better in, uh... Guy's favor because you know no chocolate really absorb no nor would Kitami had the opportunity to <gasps> on top of you know guy's speed and not really needing chocolate for anything yeah this would be a lot better in his favor all right let's see yeah no that's like one the thing I mentioned earlier with like me not knowing if guy actually did get stronger or like if he did train at all that's one of the things that bars okay. That's one of the things that bothers the shit on me about Chaputin because, like, there's so many characters that I know did spend time training uh, post time skip that should feasibly like be a lot stronger and have more time than them. You know, Neji, Rock Lee, etc., etc. Rock Lee should theoretically be fucking amazing, and so should Neji, but like, no, not really. Also, area with Kisami is ridiculous. Just want to let you know that. So it just bothers the piss out of me that. Guy does a lot more shit than either of those characters combined. But he, we haven't really known if he trained at all. I mean, of course he did, but, like, not, like, majorly. So, that that irritates me. That honestly irritates the piss out of me. <clears throat> that, that's another thing I realized there. I don't know, that really puts... Rewatching slash rereading the entire uh, Sasuke Pursuit arc, with knowing how Neji and Shoji almost died, and after... How the entire team afterwards spent a shit ton of time training, especially Neji, Lee, and I guess Kiba also. I think he also spent a good amount of time training. Hinata definitely. She she spent a lot of time training. It's just disappointing that like after the Sasuke Pursuit arc where they did start doing a lot of time training, they never did anything afterwards. At least not really. I mean, of course there was a shit like post time skip with the. Uh, Date or well, the rescue Gar arc, but they didn't really do too much there, or like showcase anything too like incredibly new. I guess that's what happens when you have clones of yourself. You're not really able to show yourself out if you're in your, in your best. I'm sorry, I'll stop. I know that this arc, that arc was dedicated more to Naruto in general, but fuck. All right, <clears throat> again, just feel like Shippuden kind of had bad direction. With how it portrayed characters and stuff, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll stop. Sort of. <laughs> okay, no, no, this fight is. I do, I do relish any I any opportunity that either Kakashi gets to fight someone or Itachi gets to fight someone, let alone each other. Fuck, that's always fun. I do still maintain that if Kakashi was able to break out of uh, Genjutsu, he could feasibly do a lot better against Itachi. Actually, it's. It's amazing he didn't break out of the Genjutsu better because, you know, by this time, um, Kakashi definitely has Waga Kyo Sharingan because, you know, of Rin dying. Because, you know, we, we've seen both Obito and Kakashi gaining Manga Kyo Sharingan at the same time. I mean, of course, that wasn't revealed until, you know, early Shippuden because that was a plot point. A pretty big one, actually. There we go. <laughs> Kaboom. I don't know, it's just that... That seems like they could have done a lot better together if, um, or had a really good fight if Manga Kyo Sharingan did natively, like, provide protection. Not complete protection, but gave a much better fighting chance of breaking out of Tsukuyomi, you know? At least I think so. I should probably stop branding or anything about that fight, but, you know, it's, it's just such a cool idea. <laughs> I like how despite the fact that there's not really a lot of story going on right now besides what you'd probably expect... But you know, probably Itachi and Sami going after Naruto and everyone in the village trying to stop them. I'm still finding this much to talk about. Interesting. <laughs> Alrighty. Also, I'm still not entirely certain if Itachi 
meant to drive Sasuke into joining Orochimaru, but he definitely... I theorize now that Itachi probably wanted to um, drive Sasuke to actually train a lot harder to be able to... Because, you know, Itachi is inside the Akatsuki, and Jiraiya knew that they, the Akatsuki would have mobilized for three years. So I, I, I feasibly think that what Itachi wanted to do was to encourage Sasuke to, to train a really fucking hard for three years straight and be able to get power to fight the Akatsuki. Which he did manage to do because he kind of fucked up Daedara and... Well, I guess Itachi let him kill him? Yeah, he kind of did. I will give Sasuke credit. He could probably mess up a fair amount of other Akatsuki members if given the opportunity. Like, may maybe Hidon. Actually, no, definitely Hidon. <laughs> he has the speed for that. Not the power, but the speed. And I guess Dry is back. Okay, all three of these guys in perfect fighting form, they would be able to mess up. Itachi and Kisame, let's not kid ourselves here. Not even counting if they, like, e even, like, not using their higher powers, I still, they still fought up a fucking good fight. Like, without using the 6th or 7th gates or Mongo Sharingan or stage mode. Yeah, no. They, they probably wouldn't. That fridge noise behind me is making me concerned, but okay. <laughs> So with Taylor over the corner, and she, since you can't really hear me, I'm just gonna say something really funny she said the other day. Uh, or maybe she does, he is able to hear me. I was gonna tell him how he thought Kisami was the actual shark dude. I'm not saying anything bad. He does become a shark, basically. I will show you later, do not worry. Funny shit, guys, don't worry. Anyway, so getting back in, into the swing of things, uh, surprisingly, we are already. Yeah, no, I was right. Okay, so going into this, I had the feeling that with how short this game is, I could probably knock this out in an entire afternoon slash evening, and I'm right because I'm only half an, an hour and a half into this, and I'm on the last goddamn chapter. This is incredible. I love this shit. I think I'm getting notifications on. Yeah. All right, so. I'm going to let the beginning of this play out, so I'm going to do a thing I can finally say I can do. I'm going to reach behind me and pull out a Mountain Dew from the fridge conveniently placed at my back. I love modern technology. Shout out to Taylor for getting a fridge behind us, so I can just reach behind me and fucking get a soda if I want to. Cold no less. Imagine this is what it's like to have a studio apartment. Everything's within arm's reach and you don't have to go too far. Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna guess it took two entire fucking arcs for everyone to be like, hey, we should probably get a search party together and go get Nar go get Sasuke back. Because you know, fuck. <laughs> oh. I'm going to see, I wanna say that this all happens within like a span of like a couple days. Because, you know, the sound for we're also fighting Itachi and the sound in and the sand ninja but I can't buy that because like or no I want to say this happened all pretty close together but I can't buy that because like all this happening within a week is impossible so and I'm gonna what does this mean that like the sound the sound for we're just like camping out in front of the fucking village the entire time I don't get it but whatever so Starting off with a genuinely good fight. No, I'm not I'm kidding. I'm gonna, I'm gonna vent to you guys for a second. I'm gonna be totally honest. Before I was rereading the manga, I remember a lot of the Itachi pursue, Itachi no, Sasuke retrieval arc being genuinely fucking good, especially with these fights. L later on in the arc, not so much. Although they're not to be false, but like the beginning of it with. The sound four fights against the getting that I remember them being good, so I was like, I'm gonna have an objective opinion about this when I go back and read the manga and like rewatch the fights. I was shocked just how actually fucking good these fights are. I don't even have to explain these two because 
Choji and Neji almost fucking die <clears throat> from these fights. Choji, of course, from the red chili pepper pill. And Neji from, you know, kind of taking a giant hole in his torso from, from the um, the arrows that Kinemaru was spitting out. So that is genuinely really fucking cool. As well as giving me a lot of respect for both these characters. Okay. Neji, I already knew, was pretty cool. Um, like, I'm talking about as a kid. Um, although, I guess I'll talk about uh, from my perspective now as an adult. as a pseudo-adult, I guess. Uh, I'm 23 and I barely consider myself an adult. <laughs> so, um... <clears throat> Choji, of course, going into this, I genuinely did not like. Like, I didn't hate him anymore. But, like, I just genuinely did not like him at this point in the show. And then he fought fucking Jirobo. And the shit that Choji goes through and the adversity he overcomes is fucking monstrous. I'm like, oh my god, I did not think I would like Choji this much. Like, just the sheer adversity he, he overcomes in order to fight off this dude. As well as having the balls to almost die to defend... Not only his friends, but his, uh, Shikamaru's honor. I'm just like, god damn, it's so good. Anyway, so, also, Choji is surprisingly good. Like, I've messed around with him a little bit, and I am pleasantly surprised at how good he is. Not great, by any stretch of imagination. He's not breaking top 20 anytime soon. Um, but he is usable, um, with his grapples. The grapples do go through, like, the A button throws do go through guards, so that's pretty cool. Neji and Kitamaro. Jesus Christ, this fight's so good. It's funny because uh, 8 tri eight tri games, 128 palms was even in the manga. Like, genuinely, that fight, that part wasn't even in there. Alright. Oh, I almost got that. Yeah, you can see what I meant by getting some pretty good reps. So, yeah. Um, Kitamaro does have some really good shit. Oh my god, okay. Nope. That combo usually does start, or that string does you usually does start a combo if he's fast enough. Oh, hey, we're ending this off in the correct fashion. We're not quite mid-air though, but you know what, it's fine. Also, this is a unique pose that he takes if he fights off Kinemaru. Fucking great. Also, it's weird that Choji hasn't lost all his fat in, in that end pose, but alright. <laughs> Because, you know, chili pepper pill, butterfly wings, burning all the fat on his body all at the same time. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. <clears throat> so while we're talking about Choji really fast, I just want to mention something funny that happened. Uh, it was a conversation he had with Eno before he left. He, he was, Eno was saying, man, I'm envious of you, Choji. Girls have to be on a diet in order to look good for the boys that we want. But then Cho Choji was like, but do you have proof that bo all boys like skinny girls? And Eno was like, it's a proven fact. And then Chukamaru was like, nah, gr girls or dudes tend to like, gr uh, girls a little more stacked, if you know what I mean. I'm like, this passed off in a fucking kid's show. I, I love it. I fucking... Actually, I'll have, I'll have a separate video for that. I'm, I have to do that at this point. Naruto, upon reading, upon going through the manga, has proven to me this was not intended to be an actual children's show. Not by any stretch of the imagination. There's a lot of reasons for that. I've come to discover between the gore, the subtle t undertones of what's going on with the basically fucking Cold War, a lot of a lot of the thematic elements too, like Gara psychosis. I'm just like, God, this is not a fucking children's show at all. I'd barely call it a teen show. Like that'd be generous. Also, yeah, Neji's fight against Kitamaro. It's amazing that like, okay, so like basically every single fight that went on. Every single one of the sounds four died. Like, Jirobo, of course, got... Oh, some of those I question, though, because, like, Jirobo got, like, punched in the stomach, like, with, like, a megaton fist, and, yeah, I can believe that would rupture, like, a lot of his internal organs from the shockwave alone. Kitamaru got hit by 64 palms. Um, usually that just shuts down someone's chakra, but... I guess, like, the final blow was aimed at his heart or something because Kitamaro fucking died after that. I'm like, wait, how the hell did Kitamaro die after that? He just had his chakra point shut down. Um, I don't know. I think there's something missing there. All to be fair, he did also have 
several of his internal organs damaged too, so... Yeah, that was one of my previous exchange in that fight. Again, seriously, the energy fight. It's it's shocking how much respect I have for both Choji and Neji after these two fights individually. They are so good and they were pushed to the edge so closely. My god.